Welcome to San Pablo in the Philippines. Hi, I'm Stu, I'm a backpacker from England and I'm currently in San Pablo City in the Philippines. And I'm on a journey going from the Philippines all the way back to England by land and water. So I got here yesterday and this is my first day of going properly exploring. Now behind me I've got a, a park which is all locked up, which is a roundabout and I am just surrounded by vehicles just all wondering what I'm doing. I'm making a video. So the part behind me is actually locked up, I can't get in. And if I can turn the camera around, put it through the railings. It's, uh, it's quite nice and it's a shame I can't get in because there's a seat there that I would love to sit on to rest my legs. And if I go around the side, showing you the traffic as I go around. Oh, let's go through this way. In the better view. See, you've got a female with a pottery on her shoulder. And then behind her, you've got a statue of Jose Rizal, a national hero of the Philippines. Now, San Pablo, where is it on a map? Here's a map of the Philippines. This is where it is. And the distance from Manila to here is not that far, considering I've only got 30 days of being on my visa for the Philippines and I've been here a week. So I've got a lot of the Philippines to cover before I go. San Pablo is nicknamed the city of seven lakes. And why? It's got seven lakes here. And I'm going to try and get to one of them later on. But as I walk around, I mean, I'm still on the roundabout. There's the back of Jose Rizal, carrying a little bowl of hats, bless him. And then across the road is San Pablo's Cathedral. This is where I try and cross the road without getting knocked over. So far, I was lucky there. So, oh, do I have to again? No. San Pablo is named after Saint Paul, the first disciple. And I'm guessing one of these is Saint Paul. I'm sure that's big JC himself. He's waving that is, way back. Now it says this is the cathedral, but it does it look big enough? I, I don't know. Right, this is where I stop and try and find out some information. So the first parish, the first church was built here in 1585, in 1586, and then in 1618 to 1629, it was converted into stone. There's been renovations throughout the years, obviously, but they put electrics in and stuff like that. But we have a little wander in.
Right, I didn't want to get too close because people are praying. And obviously, you've got to respect what they're doing. Oh. Always like a good sign. Tells me what's happening. A bit of history. And it's in English. So I don't know if you can see that. It's all about the, the Jubilee door. Which is that door there. Uh -huh. See if we can get around the back. Right, I'm on the side of the cathedral. And I'm quite impressed with quite impressed with the dome. And this is furthest to go back. With the uh, bell tower and then a separate church just there for some reason I'm seeing we can't go back I want to try now there used to be a convent here there's a lovely little nun there the bell tower oh there's the bell tower beautiful now the blue skies is a welcome addition to day since I've been here for oh just over a week I've been through floods rain storms all the good weather. So it has blue skies and the sunshine. It's just really nice. Now San Pablo is full of colonial buildings. There's a lot of history that we've obviously tried to look after from the Spanish occupation. Way back when in the 1500s. First turn, it. See, I know what I'm talking about. Lovely. The temperature today is just over 30 degrees, which, as an Englishman, is red hot. And a bit of concern that I've not got my baseball cap on, so I can feel the top of my head getting a little bit warm. But I'm going to carry on walking, take the pain, the use lot. And at the top of the street is another church. Well, we're going to find out. As I'm walking up towards this church, I have read online that San Pablo is one of the oldest cities in the Philippines. However, it was actually only made a city in 1940. So, even though this place has been going on since the 1500s and there was a settlement here before the Spanish arrived, I can't say it's the oldest city, the oldest settlement. Who knows? Right, we're getting there. Now, this is a church oh my god let's get on the other side so obviously behind me is the cathedral where we've just come from you can see this is more modern but my god it's bigger
Church of Christ, Anglesey Ni Cristo. Can you go in? Of course you can. Let's see if I get stopped. Hello. Is it okay to? No. no? Oh, okay then. Go outside. Outside. Okay, no problem. Nope, not Logan. Good job, Good job, I asked. Otherwise, you'd be chasing me. But the answer. Impressive one. It was Church of Christ. Um, evangelical mission. I can't say that. Ev evangelical. Yay! I can't speak English. Wow. So with the church behind me, in front of me, is yet another one. There's a lot of religion around here. Seventh day. Adventist Church. Right, we're going to have a wander this way and see what's down here. Doing research on this place, San Pablo, there is legends and they all basically the same, but the one I like the most that was easier to understand was as, as I'm walking around before I do get to the legend I've just seen a 7-eleven so I've stopped off because it's lunchtime for a quick coffee because I love my coffee and a chicken bowler bowler I have no idea what a chicken bowler bowler is but I'm about to find out this is actually the best view I can get before eating this thing now it's stuck to the paper so I'm trying to get it off. Um, the picture of it looked quite nice when I was buying it. Mm. It's nice, but I'm just trying to work out flavours. I can taste the chicken. Just because most of it's on the inside, so I've just got the outside of the the bun. It's very thin, very chewy. Chicken bowler bowler. It's nice. Was better finish it off. Hmm. Oh, wasn't too bad. Enjoyed that. Uh, coffee and food coming to 100 pesos, which is within my budget. But I just want to say a quick shout out to Stan Moore G, who has donated to my Buy Me a Coffee page uh, with a message of Get Yourself a Poncho, which was um, obviously you, you saw one of my videos where it was raining, but that money's gone towards. A coffee and food. So let's talk about this legend. So basically, around here there used to be a giant St. Pollock tree and this is what the tree looks like. And one day the tree was in an orchard which was owned by a stingy old nasty woman. And there was a knock on the door and an old man was there saying can i have some of the fruit from your tree and the fruit itself are, is tamarind fruit and again i found out what it looks like and this is it the old woman went no set the dogs onto this guy uh, the guy turned out to be a god and basically after he left there was thunder and lightning Cue the sound effects. Earth divided. And this is what happened. It became a lake. So this is one of the seven lakes which was mentioned earlier. 
and this is one of the biggest ones, but it is the biggest one. And it's named after the tree itself. So it's called the Lake Sambolic. Now this is the second time I've come across this lake today because this morning, like an idiot, I went for a run round it. So the distance around is 3.7 kilometers from the uh, the hostel back here and then uh, back to the ho hotel, sorry. Um, I did just under seven kilometers of running, jogging, trotting. Um, so I've ran all the way around. Now there is uh, certain parts, there is path. We're gonna go down to the lake in a minute. Um, there's a lot, mainly road, but it's so quiet that there's hardly any traffic that you can just run in peace and quiet. And I was quite lucky that um, there was, it was just early enough not to be disturbed. I even took a video of me running, just to prove <laughs> that I did it. Uh, there were other people running as well, or trotting as I call it. Uh, it's just a really nice, nice run. So we're at the top of the lake itself. Got various little statues. Do love a good statue. I'm not too sure what that one is. Uh, let's see if there's a sign. Hello. There's a map of something. Oh, these vehicles do not like stopping. So it's a monument for something. It's in Filipino. really nice in the night time. So all these lamp posts go all the way down. And this morning when I was running, it was like, how do I get down the lake? So I was looking at all these fences all sort of couldn't get through. Oh. Uh, is that a man with an umbrella? I oh, know it's a flag. On Andre Bonifico. There's another monument there. But yeah, so uh, the only way I could get down the lake was down here, some stairs. There's a few cafes around. Bit more expensive than 7-Eleven. So the stairs itself is down there. So I'm at the bottom of the stairs and you can see behind me, they are steep. It's even worse when you're running up them or down them. It goes all the way up. And then you turn around, a little fish there. And there's the lake. So I've come down to a boardwalk and the problem I've got is there is music in the background which I'm trying to talk over and not play. So a boardwalk that goes round here and you can see this is the touristy end. You've got all the cafes, little shops and then it goes into the roads. There's various paths as I said just around the area but not too much. But the, oh there's a lovely little mountain there, look at that. That's quite impressive. So there is fish in here, and uh, you'll get people fishing around. There was loads of them first thing this morning, trying to get their, their breakfast probably. It's just beautiful. Now I am gonna walk further on that way because you can get further around a better view of it and get the church in, because it's right on the, um, the lake banks 
but I'm not going to go around this a second time today. Look at that weather. Blue skies. Stunning. And it's just so quiet and peaceful that when you go to certain towns, cities within the Philippines, this is really nice. Chilled. So that is the church there. And it looks more impressive than this side. And you do get it on the front. Oh. It was a lot less busier this morning. At the moment, all you're getting is the school kids coming down because they've seen the camera. Where are you from? What are you doing? But not one of them wanted to subscribe. Wow. So I'm going to carry on walking around just so I can get a good view of the church and the lake together. Right. Now this is only one of seven of the lakes around here, but this is the closest to walk to, which is ideal for me. The other six are further afield and I would need transport probably to get there. So I'm glad this is the biggest out of the seven. Oh, you don't look too happy, do you, mate? So all the touristy <coughs> cafes, the fishing places, Everything is behind me now. This is where it gets a bit more quieter. Uh, there is no path. Um, there's a lot of rubbish. It's a shame. Or maybe it's people's belongings. Little fish nets all over the place. Oh, look at that one. Get closer. That's actually got a goldfish in it. Yeah. As I said, I'm just trying to find a spot where I can actually see the church with a lake and... Um... Still going. Still walking because all you see around you is high walls on one side and then the lake. Oh. Sort of regretting going for that run now because my legs are going, what are you doing? Oh, that's interesting. Evacuation guide map. I'm not too sure if there's an election going on around here, but this guy is seen in a lot of photos. So this is Dan Fernandez, and that there is his serious governor sort of face. And then there's another one just down here. Hold on. This is obviously his boy band look to appeal to the younger voters. It's the same guy. Wow. So I'm nearly there. Got various dogs barking at me. But I can just see the church around. 
That's a lot of dogs. But they're all in chains, so I know they're not going to be chasing after me. Thanks, Rod. Hi. And there's a lot of uh, chickens and turkeys with all their legs. Uh, one of the legs um, sort of chained up so they don't escape. So this is where people actually live around here. Wow. So yeah, so the church is not too far away around this corner. If I find a little gap in the trees, it'll be the perfect scene, the perfect scene. Right, I'm not gonna go too far because there's a lot of construction work going on down there. But I think I might have got a decent spot to sit down here. And there it is. Just get a bit closer. Oh, it's just not getting close enough. So I'll have to take a little picture. Just give you the whole lake. Now that I've got the perfect photo, there's another little, oh, let's have a close up there. That's beautiful. Enjoying the view? And in the background, you can probably just hear there's thunder. Oh, that's quite noisy. Does that mean there's a storm on the way? So I'm going to go back around and depending on if the clouds get any darker because there's still blue skies up there above me but over there it's starting to get a bit darker so I'm not too sure if I just stay out let's go a bit more who knows right I'm gonna head back into town just to be on the safe side because even though it's beautiful to sit here and watch the lake I don't want to get wet so it's probably about another 20 minute walk back into town. I could get a taxi. But as you'll hear me say so often, I'm on a budget. I am getting a little obsessed with these photographs of um, Dan Fernandez, bless him, the Congress leader to be governor or whatever but there's another photograph of him with um, someone who wants to be the vice governor that's been a little bit airbrushed but that's more pop star look and the last picture of Dan Fernandez and I like to say getting obsessed with this one is that one again with glasses the the girl with him looks a bit different from the last picture. Obviously his budget's gone a lot on photography. So to get down the lake, I came down the stairs, which is further on down that way. I'm coming up a different way back to the top. Uh, this is a lot easier than the stairs. A lot of walking. A lot of walking. Looks like a park up that way. I'm trying not to sound out of breath.
but seems this area here down there on the boardwalk is where people come down to chill the cafes oh it is a park it's slopped up find another way to get in I'll definitely class this as my favourite place in the Philippines so far oh there's the entrance let's have a wander in see the park a little bit of a green area Very nice. Little gym area. Little bandstand over there. Statues. Really nice. And even though you got traffic all the way around, it's quite quiet. Loving it. Oh, there's a war, war memorial. As you know, I'm ex-military, so these sort of things interest me. Uh, World War II guerrilla memorial shrine. The Battle of Mount Karasungan. This is a rifle with a helmet on the top. Go on, front. To the love and memory of the sons and daughters of the city of San Pablo who died in the defence of the motherland during World War II. Wow. Another one. Over there. And they've got lights all the way around. So obviously on the night time it gets lit up. It's quite nice round here. People are actually enjoying the the dry day that we've got at the moment. Don't speak too soon. So walking down here, you've got this big building which I've just been looking at the map for it tells me it's a uh, museum and there you go city of seven lakes is that a museum it didn't look like it Got to go in. In fact, no. There's a little sign at the start, at the opening. Might as well have a look. So this is the sign. It looks like it's the old city hall. I don't think this is a museum. Oops. I'm now back in town, as you can tell by the noise of traffic. And I just want to show you this again. This is something I showed you in the last video, the welcome sign to San Pablo. And at the top is a lion. And round the boardwalk is a lot of lions. And I got thinking, why lions? There are no lions around in, in the Philippines. So I do a little bit of Google. And the lion is actually on the coat of arms for the Philippines. And it's there to represent colonial Spain, recognizing the, the past of the Spanish being here. And obviously because this is one of the oldest places that the Spanish came to way back when in the 1500s. I'm guessing that's why there is a lion 
all over the place in San Pablo. Now I'm just watching where I'm going because that is vehicles everywhere. And I am on my way back to the hotel. It's getting a bit late. It's been a long day. I've been taking plenty of rest around the city just to chill, to relax, taking the views of the lake and try and not get knocked over. Oh, that's a... Uh, that's not used this, this railway line. Or down that way. Mm. So, my little legs after the run this morning, especially. Wow. It's time for me to go back and chill and sort my life out to work out where I'm going tomorrow. Because I'm only here for the two nights. If you are ever in the Philippines, if you're ever in this area, so I mean, is not that far away, come here. I recommend it. I've enjoyed it. It's been, um, I think I said it earlier, it's one of my favorite places so far. Once you get over the traffic and get out to the lake, but it's time to leave tomorrow morning. Where am I going to go? I haven't got a clue. I mean, I wasn't really meant to be here, but I was recommended to come here by one of my subscribers, Ray. Thank you very much. But if you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed San Pablo, press that like button. If you want to see where I'm going to next, then all you've got to do is press that subscribe button. If you want to comment, if you want to share, share away, comment away. But until the next time, bye bye for now.